A huge focus of North American archaeology is the timing and nature of the first Americans arriving to the continent. While it is well established through genetics that the first Americans were the ancestors of living indigenous Americans, and that the Clovis culture has been the earliest well-documented culture starting around 13,000 years ago, the nature of a possible pre-Clovis people is still debated. A few sites, like the Monte Verde site in South America, demonstrate unequivocally that people were living in the Americas prior to Clovis although many supposed pre-Clovis sites are less convincing. New archaeological research at the Cooper's Ferry site in Idaho have resulted in one of the better pre-Clovis sites to date, with deposits of artifacts dating some 3,000 years earlier than Clovis. In this video, I flintknap one of these pre-Clovis projectile points from the Cooper's Ferry site and discuss the recent findings here. Cooper's Ferry is located along a terrace of the Lower Salmon River in Idaho in North America. The oldest component of the site is that of the Western stem tradition, identified by long, narrow stemmed points. Previous research at Cooper's Ferry and a number of other sites shows that the Western stem tradition has been present since at least 13,000 years ago. However, the results of the newest excavations at Cooper's Ferry date to 16,000 years ago. This newly excavated portion of Cooper's Ferry was designated as Area B, and excavations here took place from 2012 to 2018 as part of archaeological field schools. These investigations uncovered a layer with three pit features, which included 14 stem projectile points, a small number of other tools, and large quantities of flake debris and animal bone fragments. The 14 Western stem tradition points recovered include 12 that were made from cryptic crystalline material, such as chert and agate, and two points which were made from fine-grained volcanic rock, which is likely basalt. All of the raw material sources used to make these points occurs within a 10 km radius of Cooper's Ferry. I didn't have any material from this area, so I decided to use a piece of Novaculate for my replica as it has a similar color to some of the agate used at Cooper's Ferry. Most of these artifacts were made from long flakes, which would have required minimal thinning, but four of the larger points were made from larger bifacial preforms. Cross sections of these points range from biconvex to planoconvex, and all of the points show some degree of resharpening, and some have collateral flaking patterns. These points aren't particularly large, with the biggest measuring 7 cm in length, with most around 5 cm, although there is one particularly small point. Stylistically, they have contracting stems and weak shoulders to define the hafting area. The researchers at the site note that these appear distinct from younger styles of western stem tradition points. The points at Cooper's Ferry were likely used as hunting implements, as either the tips of spears or more likely, within a lateral or spear thrower system. The artifacts in Area B of Cooper's Ferry were recovered from a layer called LUB3, which also contained three pit features, named Feature 78, Feature 108, and 151. Feature 78 was approximately 105 centimeters in diameter and 50 centimeters deep. It contained four points, a fragmentary point, several tool fragments, over 250 pieces of depotage, seven pieces of firecracked rock, two pieces of charcoal, and over 200 pieces of animal bone. Feature 108 was 90 centimeters in diameter and 40 centimeters deep. It contained seven complete and fragmentary projectile points, over 50 pieces of depotage, and 21 pieces of animal bone. Feature 151 was about 75 centimeters long, 60 centimeters wide, and 50 centimeters deep. It contained 8 pieces of debitage and 60 animal bone fragments, but no projectile points. Excavation of the LUB3 layer outside of the pit features resulted in the recovery of 10 pieces of debitage, 6 animal bones, and 2 more stent points, all in situ. Archaeologists sampled bones from the two pits with projectile points, 
in order to get seven radiocarbon dates, which produce a date range of 16,000 to 15,600 calibrated years before present. These new dates at Cooper's Ferry are significant because they show that the Western Sun tradition may not have only been contemporaneous with Clovis, but also predated it. This research is still new, so there's been limited published scrutiny by other archaeologists to this date. However, based on the findings presented, Cooper's Ferry appears to be one of the most convincing pre-Clovis sites in North America. Unlike other pre clovis sites, it has a good case for good dating in combination with an extensive assemblage which contains artifacts with a recognizable cultural style. The attributes of the points at Cooper's Ferry indicate that they are part of the Western Stem tradition. This is a stone tool technological tradition found in the archaeological record of the Great Basin. Western stem sites are often found around relic lakes or wetlands, or deep within cave and rock shelter deposits. Cooper's Ferry pushes the origins of this tradition to 16,000 years ago, but it has generally been accepted as ranging from 13,000 to 8,000 years ago. Western stemmed points include stemmed forms, but also lanceolate varieties although these might be considered variations on how ancient flintknappers applied shouldering to a unified template. Unidirectional, multidirectional, centripetal, and amorphous lithic cores were used to produce blanks for western stemmed points. Some styles of these points appear to be intended for long use lives with multiple resharpenings, while other smaller ones appear to be more expedient. They were likely multi-purpose tools in many cases, starting out as projectile points and then being transitioned to cutting tools after multiple repairs and resharpenings. The researchers working at Cooper's Ferry think that the people at the site, or likely their ancestors, accessed North America by migrating along the coast. The coastal migration hypothesis is one of the more solid ideas on how the first Americans arrived, and is usually the hypothesis of choice for pre-Clovis proponents. It contrasts the hypothesis that the first Americans moved into the continent from Beringia through an ice-free corridor. However, the timing of this corridor, its ability to support life, and the known range of human occupation in the Americas has cast doubt on the ice-free corridor hypothesis. The dates at Cooper's Ferry add further doubt to this idea, as the interior route would have been closed off during this time frame. In the coastal migration hypothesis, humans moved into the Americas from Beringia still, but moved down the Pacific coastline instead of an interior route. Walking the coastline may have been involved, but these first Americans would have been more than capable of making watercraft, which would allow them to travel faster, more safely, and around obstacles. The Pacific coast would have been free of ice and allowed for continuous passage into South America from North America. Genetic evidence has established that the first Americans originated in southern Siberia and eastern Asia before migrating to the Americas. However, demonstrating a technological link between Asian and North American technological traditions has been a bit harder. The authors of the 2022 Cooper's Ferry study claim that the most comparable Asian lithic assemblage to the Cooper's Ferry assemblage is a late Upper Paleolithic bifacial point complex in Hokkaido, Japan. Stemmed points from this complex have both collateral flaking and simple beveled blades, similar to the Cooper's Ferry points. While genetic evidence demonstrates that Jamon, who are the early prehistoric Japanese population, cannot be the genetic ancestors of early Americans, these authors propose that late Upper Paleolithic inhabitants of Hokkaido could represent a different genetic population. However, they cite no evidence to support this idea, making it tenuous at best. They hypothesize that pre jamon groups of East Asian people migrated to both Hokkaido and along the Pacific Rim to the Americas during a period of 22,000 to 16,000 years ago. However, the similarities between Upper Paleolithic points in Japan and in Western North America is probably coincidental. 
and tracking stem points are not unique to these two cultures, and are a halfling style invented and used in many times and places throughout prehistory. The collateral flaking and single beveled blades are not unique traits either. From the photos presented in the study, the collateral flaking that the author suggests isn't very evident on these points, while the Japanese stemmed points are much more distinct, with refined collateral patterns. While it is an interesting idea, there is no evidence for a direct connection between the stemmed point assemblages in Hokkaido and at Cooper's Ferry. Based on current evidence, the earliest inhabitants of Cooper's Ferry were from a population that had been moving down the Pacific coastline and had moved into what is now western Idaho near the Salmon River. This early population seems to have arrived around 16,000 years ago, evidenced by bone fragments that they left in pits that they had dug and had now been radiocarbon dated by archaeologists. Among other stone artifacts, these people left 14 stem projectile points which identify that they were part of the Western stem tradition. This location continued to be used after this earliest occupation, as Western stem people continued to come back to the site, as evidenced by other excavations here. The discovery of 16,000-year-old deposits at Cooper's Ferry greatly extends the presence of human occupation in North America. Hopefully these new findings at the site hold up to the scrutiny of the archaeological community.